talked to Paley yesterday, Mr. President. Well, oh, good. I was going to ask you about what he said. Fine. And uh, I never said no. No, I never got a chance to. He, he, I called him up and I said, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to talk to you. But he said, oh, can you see me? And I said, well, no. I think so. I said, I have one thing I want to talk to you about. He said, fine, I'll come down tomorrow. And I said, no, I can't see you tomorrow. He said, I'll come down Monday. And uh, he didn't want to talk over the phone. He just died to come see me. So I figured I'll, I'll let him come in. And then, then put the client to him? And put the thing, put the client thing to him. So I'm seeing him Monday at 1 o'clock. But tell him, that's the client, period. Oh, yeah. I'll just say, look, you guys are crazy because you can hire all the executives you want. That isn't going to solve you. You're probably going to put somebody on the air who is, who is going to give balance to all the goddamn uh, slamming that we've been taking from right. Rather and Pierpoint and right. Severide and Cronkite and I guess Shore. I, 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 I'm going to make a real pitch on it. I, All right. I'm sure Herb would love it, too. So that would help us. And also, give Klein plenty of money. Oh, well, they, they, they got the money. They got the money. Got it. They sure as hell do. You'd think they would think of that, but uh, there's a goddamn... Well, you do it. Oh, I'll put the screws to him. I can, I know just, uh, he was so, he was so eager. Uh, the fact that I would call him and... Uh, be willing to talk to him. My God, he's, he wanted to come down first thing this morning. I got him last night. He wanted to come down this morning. I said, I can't do it. So he'll be here He'll be here Monday, and I'll put the put the screws to him very hard. So we want Klein, and he ought to put him in there. They ought to have balance in their show. Yep. And Klein is a hell of a guy, television personality. Sure. And they ought to have a little balance in the goddamn thing. That's right. And they'll put him in, and we're still going to figure, I still got some ideas of ways that I know. We'll put the screws to these fellas. I know. You know, I think there's an interesting thing happening. Uh, Bibi mentioned this to me tonight. Teddy Kennedy's speech, you know, which was very conciliatory. Uh, yeah, but, but I was wondering about that very shrewd comment, as I told you about uh, our that son of a bitch chairman, where Harriman said this is very smart. He's setting Nixon up so he can kick him later. Yeah, that might be so, or he might be getting a little bit worried about being known as the uh, uh, the point man against a president who is at the, this moment in history uh, as popular as, you know, can't, I don't think any president could ever be more popular than you are today. Uh, I think Teddy may be sensing this, you know, and he may... Uh, uh, some people say he's got problems of his own that are going to develop. Well, you got other problems. Uh, the point is, that get to your friend that knows Kennedy and tell him to get to Kennedy and say, look, for Christ's sakes, let's let's get along for a while, and you've got your time a couple of years from now. That's what I was thinking. That I think that's what he's. I believe that's what Kennedy is. Uh, is uh, I think he's throwing out that olive branch deliberately. I think he doesn't want to tangle with us right now. And we're getting that same kind of feeling from the media, you know. Really? Oh, yeah. Paley going to jump on an airplane to come down here. They're scared of us. They know, first of all, they know that, I think they now know we mean business. We, we're we not sucking around with them. The election's over. they got to live with us four years. They know that. And I think that, I think giving that interview to Jack Horner was one of the smartest things that ever happened because well, of that. Well, really burns your ass. Yeah, and then I gave... CBS, a hell of a roasting in a speech, which got a lot of publicity, and then and, and, uh, we've been leaking stuff to the star. And I think they all of a sudden figured out we mean business. That's right. Uh, and they're scared as hell. If we do mean business, we can do them a lot of harm. Yeah. Whitehead is giving a speech next week, which is going to shake the hell out of the network. Yeah. I, I clear that it's tough, but uh, he'll be giving it as his own views. Wow. But each one of these things, they understand what the hell the name of the game is, and if we can continue to play it rough, we'll bring these bastards around. That's it. All right, we're going to stick with uh, Webster, okay? Yes, sir. Fight it out. Oh, well, I'm, oh hell. He's a good, he's he's got many, many Republican men. Tell him to get some friends to get all of his friends lined up with their for him, you know, we're, so that we don't have a situation where it's just him against us. Oh, no. no. He'll, he'll get a lot of help on the Hill. And uh, he's got an awful lot of friends up there. And his, when his fellows, it's not like it, there's nothing here that they can really make an issue out of. Uh, he thinks they audited hell out of him because he was an active Republican during those early 60s. I think that's probably true. And, right. Uh, I, he, he's a fighter, and uh, uh, we'll get him through. Brock is his Brock is his closest friend up there, and I'm sure that who? Brock. Yes. Brock is a friend of his. Oh yes. You tell Brock, goddammit, it, we gotta 
get him in. I thought I would call Bill and just say, look, uh, this is a must. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I hope your foot is better, Mr. President. Don't let oh, that go. Don't worry about the foot. It's yeah. just uh, it's a little infection, but it'll it'll come out. Oh, Jesus. Well, have him watch it. That's... Oh, there's no problem. No problem. No problem. It'll, it'll work out. Too important. All right. Now, as you know, we're... Uh, we got a tough problem in Vietnam. Henry's going to give a briefing tomorrow, and it'll be pretty tough. But also not in sorrow, not in anger, but in sorrow. And then on the, about, uh, we're not going to do it this Sunday, but on Monday, mm-hmm. we're going to start bombing the bastards. I talked to Hague this afternoon, and I, I, how do you think? Oh, I think you're absolutely on the right course. I mean, it'd be nice if the... If the North Vietnamese had caved, they didn't the hell with them. I don't. I think the American people are solidly with you, and I just don't think you have any problem at all. I, no, I think if Henry handles it, that you know we will still still uh, totally uh, open to the negotiations, but not not until they're ready to come back to their position, which doesn't doesn't close the door. No, I think you're. I think the way you outlined it yesterday is is. Uh, I, exactly. I gave him a line to use. So I hope he gets in. I know he will. Where I said that what we want is not after the longest war. We don't want a short peace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good line, eh? That's a damn good, damn good line, damn good line. But I, I don't think you have to worry about the uh, about the look out where I, We'll take it. We'll take a little outcome. Oh, a little bit, sure. Bound to but, you know, people who say, oh, Christ, why are we bombing them and all that? That's all right. Most of the American people probably want to bomb the bastards. I think they do. I don't think they want to be pushed. Well, I damn sure that our majority, our constituency, sure as hell doesn't want to be pushed around. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to sell out. They want to go out of there. and They want you to tell them that we're going out in a way that is honorable and it was all worthwhile. And that's what they want to hear. And until we can tell them that, their attitude is we're not going to be pushed around. I, I don't think you'll find a, that the mood of the country is... Now, one thing I want you to do, though. Yes, sir. I told all of them today, I guess he's been in touch with you, but the main thing is I want you to mobilize all of our people to be all out when the bombing starts. Absolutely. They are hit, you know... The VFW, the uh, you know the American Legion, the uh, uh, the hard hats, the rest say, "Thank God, we're doing what we ought to do." Right, right. Will you do that? I will do that, Mr. President. We'll get them. Uh, they'll come out for us. We got, we got, we got the right ones. We've been, we've been spending time with them this week. We had them all here. We'll get Mini lined up, of course. We'll have to. Mini be fine. I tell Henry that uh, he ought to maybe. Go over and have a little chat with me and tell me, oh, good God damn it, let's go. Huh? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. That'd be the Henry or, or Haig, who Meany. Maybe Haig, yeah. more than Meany. Yeah, Meany thinks very highly of Haig. Haig, but uh, rather than Henry, because yep. Meany is a little bit anti Semitic. So. Yep, he is. And uh, suspicious. He, Haig is a good Catholic boy. He likes Haig. Good. No, I don't think that I really don't think there'll be any problem. I think it'll be a little ripple. Well, the, the Marvin Calves will get all excited. Oh, screw that. But exactly. People don't, people don't follow them. I, I, God, I certainly heard that. If that's one thing that this group that we've had in this week are unanimous on, you talk about any of the network commentators, Jesus, they, uh, they just, uh, you know, they regard them as the enemy. Uh, I think that's one thing. Oh, right. with, that's one thing we've done with Middle America. We've destroyed their credibility with. That's right. With people and. Uh, Good. Okay, get that goddamn percentage up now. Yes, sir. I'll work on that this weekend. You and Scammon. Okay, we'll do it. Bye. Thank you, Mr. President.